Today I'm going to talk about uh, WASM and what we're doing with WASM and OpenShift. So a little history of what WASM is. Uh, so what web, web browsers run basically untrusted content, where you go to web, web services, uh, you download you know, little apps to run inside of your web browser. Um, and traditionally, those were like written in JavaScript, so um, a few years ago. Um, but as JavaScript was very slow, and basically as they developed it, they wanted to run higher end applications inside of your browsers. So um, things like high end applications, you know, all sorts of graphics, videos, things like that. If you wanted to build that um, running inside of a browser, you had to have advanced uh, technology. You really wanted to get sort of more native um, to the operating system. So uh, WebAssembly or WASM uh, was a new, they developed a new extendable format uh, for exec, executing uh, applications on any OS, on any architecture. So it, they standardized the bytecode that you would run on, and it was introduced back in 2015 and really released in 2017. But it's really an evolving standard, um, and it allows you to run apps inside of your web browser at near native speeds. Um, so it's you know really a major advance, and as you play in web browser in the last few years, all the really cool things. People are actually playing real games inside of web browsers and things like that. Um, so to me, this sounds a lot like Java, right? Um, so you know, it's build it in one place, run it anywhere, that type of uh, thing that Java was trying to sell many, many years ago. Um, but Java, by default, uh, was to trust the code. So when you run a Java application, you really sort of trust the code uh, running on the system, whereas Wasm is more about um, basically don't trust the code, right? So the web browser really doesn't trust the code that it's going to be running locally, so they really try to lock it down uh, when you run the code inside of a web browser, right? You don't want the code going in and grabbing your secrets or your credit card data and things like that as you run it in a web browser. Um, so that's, that's a little difference on how the two standards, uh, two application platforms grew. Uh, but as WASM became popular and applications became popular, people started looking, could we run these applications outside of the web browser, right? Could we, you know, and WASM provided us theoretically the strong security layer. It provided us a small binary size, right? So you would run uh, fairly small applications, um, fast loading and running, cross OS, cross arch, portable format, Seems like something we might want to do in the cloud, right? So start to run these applications in the cloud um, and run on different platforms. Uh, one of the things that's really, in my opinion, is really kicking off ARM um, is we have this transition going on where you know, traditionally up the last 20 years, everything's been on x86. Well, ARM um, is finally starting to become real, real popular. I work on the edge devices, on the edge systems now, and ARM um, is everywhere there, and as, um, Mac, you know, Apple's transitioning their platforms to ARM, we're starting to have this, you know, really a two uh, architecture system. So having applications um, running in the cloud, you have to start to build, you know, applications in two different hardware platforms, maybe two different OSs. Um, so uh, that's really where WASM popularity started to happen. Uh, but WASM tends to run inside of web browsers, so we needed a way to run them natively on, you know, on your system. Um, so they developed uh, what's called a WASM runtime. So think about this as pulling the code out of the web browser uh, into running the applications locally. Um, so WebAssembly outside the browser requires some host features. So when we run applications inside of the browser, we want to pre prevent it from getting access to your file system or prevent it from binding to nodes. But as we start to move it into the world of containers and cloud native, we want to start leaking some of that information into it. So we want to really look at these run times and how we can run these applications um, and then allow them some access to the operating system. So uh, they've evolved APIs to implement um, mechanisms for these applications to run locally, uh, but the system calls from the applications are still being trapped by the run times, the WASM run time, uh, the WASI run times, um, rather than going straight to the operating system. So we still have this security barrier. So in open source, we don't invent one way of doing things, we invent multiple ways of doing things. So right now there's three WASI runtimes going simultaneously in the open source community that are all vying, vying to see which one sort of wins. 
There's Wasm Time, Wasmer, and Wasm Edge. And there's no clear winner at this point. And so in the RHEL world right now, we're not picking a winner, right? We're only gonna make this, the software available um, via Apple at this point. Now maybe in the future, where one of these becomes dominant, we might start to support, fully support it in, in traditional RHEL, but we still wanna make some of this technology available inside of um, OpenShift so we can start to develop it, but we're gonna sort of hide it away from you which one we're gonna be using, um, but um, uh, until they really become standard, but a uh, little hint here, we're right now we're going with Wasm Edge. So Wasm Edge will be the first one that we're gonna support inside of OpenShift. Um, so now we basically say, okay, we have applications being built and we have a runtime that we can run them on top of a platform, uh, but we want to plow the, apply them to cloud native, right? So we want these applications, these simple applications to be distributed the same way we distribute all applications. So we want them to be light, lightweight container images following the OCI standard and be able to be stored at container registries. So like Docker.io, Quay.io, Out of Factory, you know, the thousands of different container registries that are out there. We want them to be able to be pulled by standard tools using the standard APIs like Cryo, Scopio, Podman, Docker, ContainerD, Builder, whatever technology you want to do, we're gonna be able to pull them off of container registries. Um, but we have to identify it. So most applications in the OCI standard uh, are identified by the operating system and by the architecture. And so there is really, the architecture here is WASM. So there's gonna be an identification in these images that says that they're the WASM, uh, WASM architecture. When an OCI uh, system like OpenShift pulls down um, one of these container images, it's gonna launch an OCI runtime that matches that architecture. So we have a OCI image stored at a container registry, now we want to run an OCI runtime to run the application locally on the system. So if you follow OCI, OCI images are basically, we all sort of understand those, are images that stick, sit at container registries. Um, but when, we, when I run an application on a platform, there are really three people who have input. The developer of the application sort of puts his standards into um, what, you know, he stores it in the OCI image that sits at the container registry. Then we have the application that's gonna, the, the container engine that's gonna run it, so if that's Cryo, Podman, Docker, um, ContainerD, they have sort of hard-coded standards into what it means to run a container. And then the third one that has input is, you know, the Kubernetes YAML file, the user that's launching the application. We combine all three of those inputs into what's called an OCI runtime specification. It's a JSON that describes how you wanna run the application locally in the system, and that gets handed to what's called an OCI runtime. In the world of OCI runtimes, um, traditionally there's, there's two real uh, strong ones. The first one was called Run C, which was written in Golang and is part of the OCI, and then Red Hat has adopted a one that's written in C called C Run. So C run is a fast, low memory footprint. We wanted to rewrite what was done in run C, but in C so that could more easily adopt other C based libraries. So we, uh, C run is becoming the default OCI runtime in OpenShift going forward. Um, it translates what, you know, that, that OCI runtime specification into the kernel. Basically it tells the kernel how it's gonna run the applications um, but with C run, we're able to link other libraries into it. So C run understands the OCI runtime, but we can have other libraries linked into it, including WASM runtimes. So we're creating a new OCI runtime called C run WASM. And it's really just C run, the link to the WASM libraries. And that, that will allow us to pull down a, a WASM based application from an OCI, put it onto the system, and then run C run WASM and it will link to the WASM runtime. So WASM edge in this case and delegate the work workload to the WASM runtime. If one of the other OCI, one of the other WASM runtimes begins to win, we can easily swap out the other runtimes. So C run, if you basically pull off WASM 
uh, Wasm Edge and install Wasm Time or Wasm Mirror, then we can easily swap them out as one as the standards evolve, um, but still use the same st standard OCI runtime. Um, because um, C run Wasm will support all three of those libraries. Um, interesting thing to look at here is if you look at the OpenShift of the Podman, the way we run containers in here, we'll be running the Wasm runtimes the same way inside as we run other containers. So our Wasm runtime will be running inside of a container. What Docker and uh, Container D are doing right now is they're actually farming out their applications to the Wasm runtime. So they're running the Wasm runtime um, as basically root on a system and trusting that Wasm runtime uh, secure. So that's a fundamental difference in the way that OpenShift is gonna be running um, Wasm applications in the environment. So the major perks of this is that we have an additional security layer. If the workload breaks out of a Wasm runtime, things like SE Linux and other security mechanisms are still gonna be confining that application on the system. Uh, container workloads are also gonna be constrained same way you run containers. So you're gonna be wrapping them in, in all of the C group's nice, niceties to make sure the applications don't interfere with the system. And then finally, we're gonna be restricting them by things like user namespaces, mount namespaces, networks. So as these applications start to grow access into your host operating system, we still want to wrap them as much security as possible and to isolate them from the system as much as possible. So treat all containers in your system, whether they're WASM, whether they're traditional containers, whether they're CADA containers, or uh, we really want to treat all containers you know, as locked down as possible uh, with the defense in depth. So the big question I'm probably gonna get is when can I get access to this with OpenShift? So the most likely time this is gonna be available is OpenShift 4.15 uh, with a stretch goal of 4.14. Um, now, for, to give you the dates, 4.14 is planned for October, I've been told, and then 4.15 uh, will be about four months later, um, so we're looking at next February. Uh, that's my end of my quick presentation, and I do my fingers plugged. <laughs>